What do you want to do tonight, Marty? I don't know. What do you feel like doing? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, I tell you, if you were a man, I'd say, well, let's go over and maybe we can pick up a couple of nurses. <laughs> you know, I have been waiting so long <laughs> to meet this gentleman, Ernest Borgnine, and I said, I wonder if he would do the lines from Marty with me. And they said, no, 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 he's not going to. And I said, he's the kind of, he, he'll do, you did him, oh, <laughs> let me, do, oh, I want to give, I am, oh, listen, the, your, you, your role is so permanently etched in my memory. And can, you. can we go back a couple of years, because sure I remember can. seeing Rod Steiger play it, I think it was a Playhouse 90, mm -hmm. and it was live, but they did have a kinescope. Right. And he was remarkable. He was, although I've never seen the show. They asked me if I wanted to see the show before I did the mo motion picture, and I said, no, because I'm sure that Rod has his own version, and I'd like to do mine, if you don't mind. And uh, that's the way it came about. Well, that's why I'm curious, because he was, he was excellent also. But you got the movie role, and you won the Academy Award as a result. Let me tell you how that came about. Um, I was down in uh, Mexico making a picture called Veracruz mm -hmm. with um, Burt Lancaster and Gary Cooper and a bunch of others. And... Uh, uh, while I was down there, Delbert Mann, who had originally done the direction on Marty uh -huh. for television, came down with the script under his arm in order to learn how motion pictures were made through a motion picture camera. And uh, while he was there, Bob Aldrich, who recently passed away, unfortunately, asked to read the, the script. And a couple of weeks later at a party, he was asked... Uh, who he thought could make a good Marty. And he turned around and, and floored them all by saying, well, I think the most logical guy in the world to do it would be Ernie Borgman. I said, Ernest Borgman, he plays villains. No, he plays an actor doing villains. And they said, by golly, maybe we can. Now, years later, come to find out, the reason that they made Marty was to actually make the picture for a tax loss. The company that made it wanted to do it as a tax loss because of all the money they were making on the other side from all the pictures they were making. And they were making millions. Well, they were going to make half the picture and then shelve it and then take the tax loss. And their man said, no, you can't do that. You've got to make it all, show it once, then you can take all the tax loss you want. So we made the picture for a, a farthing. Actually, it was $263,000. They spent more on advertising than they did on the picture. And when they suddenly saw that one time, they, saw, they said, my, I remember Burt Lancaster saying, why didn't you shoot more? And they said that he wouldn't let us. <laughs> well, you didn't know that going into it, though. No, heavens You just no. gave it your... I made the picture for $5,000. Oh, wow. Really? But I would have given anything just to make the picture because, to me, I had no idea that it would win an Academy Award. It was a little tiny black and white picture. It was a nothing, you know. And but I, it was everything that I'd ever wanted to do in in show business. And uh, uh, where do these parts come along? Yeah. They, nobody writes them anymore, you know. Oh, what a gem that was! It certainly was. You've been in Hollywood a long time, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm always surprised why they never said Ernest Borgnine. We're going to have to put a false tooth in there. You have a gap <laughs> tooth. Why didn't they ever do that to you? Because they better not. That was my <laughs> trademark. <laughs> and uh, no way. I uh, no. I matter of fact, that's that's it. Uh, no way. I like the way it looks. I just wondered if they ever put you <laughs> under any pressure to do that. Since oh, they wanted to fill it in one time for doing Marty. They wanted to fill it in. I actually went to a dentist who actually made a filling to put in there. And I said, I spit it out and I said, no way. And they actually wanted to change my name. And I said, if they can't say Ernest Borgnine, then I'm not ready for show business and show business is not ready for me. That's it. Well, you showed them on the tales. <laughs> he was actually in the Navy and then came out and uh, decided to be an actor and winds back up in the military. In the military. And the reason we are here this morning is to talk about another show that he's doing on CBS called Airwolf, and he's back in the military. You can't seem to escape Well, that. it's not really military. Uh, the military has something to do with it. Uh, they'd like to get this uh, helicopter that's stolen back from, let's say, Libya. The bad guys. Right. And so... Uh, Stringfellow Hawk, played by Jan Michael Vincent, 
and Dominic Santini, played by me, go to Libya in order to retrieve the, um, the helicopter. Yeah. Hey, Misty. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Hey, 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 it's me. I thought you weren't supposed to be here till Friday. Oh? Huh? Then I'll go back. Hey. <laughs> oh, oh, the police see you. We get it back, but on the stipulation that they find missing in action brother of Stringfellow Hawk and they can't. Mm -hmm. And so we keep the helicopter ourselves and use it for our own purposes. Is this the Blue Thunder helicopter? Not in any way, shape, or form. Um, it is a helicopter par excellence, but it's only incidental to uh, the story Airwolf. Well, tell me what the helicopter won't do. I mean, it seems to do everything except cook your breakfast. Well, it won't <laughs> cook the breakfast. I was just going to say it won't make eggs for you <laughs> or wash your laundry. But it could. It could. It could. <laughs> With the right kind of programming. Exactly. exactly. Um, oh, there was one particular thing. Do you, do you fly? Do you fly at all? No, I didn't fly. But uh, when I went up for my first flight uh, to coordinate myself with this whole deal, I suddenly found what a great experience it is to hold onto the instruments of a helicopter and fly. And boom, I went, and uh, now I can't wait to get my pilot's license. Are you going to do it? Absolutely. You can't Even at my age. <laughs> what do you mean at your age? You can, it's, it's just a little more complicated than uh, exactly. driving a car in the sky. Exactly. That's now, right. it's the landing. where there's, That's where a little bit of problem. Learning to land it. You can get it up. It'll take off by itself. Oh, easy. Bringing it back down is a little more that's difficult. Right. That's right. You can get it. I can do it. Get it. I know Please I Please do. I will. What a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Thank Borden. You, Good luck <laughs> in the series. Thank you, Lena. It's called Airwolf, of course. He is the Ernest Borden. What a <laughs> pleasure to have him with us. Stay tuned. 10-11 morning continues.